Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. I wanted to show you this project that I was working on. So this may look familiar to you because it is one of the um, Club G45 kits um, using the farmhouse and it's called a Rise and Shine Folio. So many of you may have done this already. I can't remember what month it was, just a few months ago. But anyway, um, I was working on this folio and then I just decided to make a few changes and um, and I just wanted to show you how versatile these kits are. So the instructions and the ideas in here are so amazing, but sometimes we just want to switch it up for whatever reason. So that's what I did with this. So I pretty much followed the folio, um, the creating of the folio exactly. I mixed up some of the papers. Um, actually the reason I did was because I started off making some incorrect cuts on the paper and so I just um, switched it up and changed it around and used different color, different cut pattern papers. So I'm all from the farmhouse line obviously, but um, just some of the, the papers that I use on my cover and inside are not the ones that are shown in the instructions. So, so I created this and then what I decided to do, I loved all the aspects of the folio. Um, I love this little V here to put things in the pockets. Um, also this, so I changed that a little bit. Um, I did only put one of these because um, I used up a lot of my paper in this project, but um, it still is the same idea. But what I wanted to do in the center here, so if you remember correctly from the kit, it created this really cool box that sat here and then you could slip the three little um, travel journal inserts in it and I, I did love that idea but I wanted to actually save those inserts for a different project excuse me and I also loved um, these papers so much that sometimes I want to create a project where you actually see all the paper um, instead of getting it too covered up so that's what I decided to do with this and actually turn it into a bit of a notebook. So I thought this would be actually a great thing to keep track of stuff like household items, maybe insurance papers or, or maybe a recipe book. This would make a great place to record recipes too. But anyway, so many uses for it. So what I did was I started out by basically this here is going to become kind of the spine of my book. So what I did was I punched holes in here. So I'm doing two signatures, one and two, and they're each gonna be a three hole pamphlet stitch. So I don't know if you can see that super well, but I've already punched the holes in here. So I've measured this out. Um, what I did was I just measured a center here and then kind of measured up from the center both ways um, without going too high because then you kind of are too close to the ends of your paper. And then I did two lines here. So I've, I've left, I believe it was three eighths of an inch on this side and I did a hole and then a quarter inch and a hole and then three eighths of an inch. So, so I've already pre-punched and I use my, my uh, big bite, I guess it is, it's a very old one, my Cropodile, but um, it's fantastic, works great um, through the chipboard. So I cut my holes here and then what I did was I've created two signatures here. So I've already semi-prepped those. So um, I'll show you what's in them. I've got them kind of clipped up right now, but I will show you um, once I get them stitched in what papers I put in there. But um, for now, I'm just gonna show you how to do this. So I've already um, punched holes in this one. So I'm using a telephone book. It's just super easy <laughs> an old telephone book um, and there's my paper piercer um, so I have this sheet that I kind of used as a template this top piece of paper I used as a template so it's already got the holes punched in that that are actually going to line up with this keeping in mind that this this is nine inches by six inches I believe now I'm second guessing myself. That's right, nine by six. So 
I did I cut the the height of the papers instead of nine inches I did eight inch eight and three quarter inches so that's leaving a like an eighth of an inch top and bottom and then this way you want your papers so six and six are going to equal 12 but instead I did 11 and three quarters and that's going to give you some space here because you know how most books the covers are are larger than the inserts right the signatures so that's what I did there so and then I just line them up because not all the papers are the exact same some are smaller so I line them up and get them all kind of snug there I put clips on either side as you can see that's just to hold them so they don't get all skewed when I'm punching the hole so I have my template piece of paper in there and I'm just putting this in the center of my phone book and then I'm using my paper piercer and I'm going through the holes like that and I kind of wiggle it around a little bit just makes it a little bit easier when I'm stitching that the holes are large enough now um, oftentimes people ask me why I don't use this to do the holes but this would in your um, if all of the holes were th that large then it's got too much give when they're all stitched in because the holes kind of too big so it's got a little bit too much give whereas if this is smaller you have um, uh, it, it just is tighter when it's all combined so that's why I do that it makes it a little bit harder in stitching with the holes but it works so I'm gonna take this template out because I'm not that's not part of this signature and I'm going to add it back into this signature because that's where it came from clips back on it all right now we can go ahead and stitch so I'm gonna get rid of my phone book here I live in a tiny town it's a tiny phone book <laughs> so I'm going to put this as my second signature so my last one so I have two here and this one's going to be my last signature so I've already cut my string here it's like a cotton cord um, it's fantastic really strong great this is just a needle it's got a kind of a blunt end almost like a cross stitch needle or a needle point um, and a little bit of a, a larger eye so sometimes hard to thread but I usually cut this on an angle and then it, it makes it a little bit easier so I've already thread that. Generally speaking, you need as much cord as two and a half times the width you're going. That's sort of a rule of thumb. So two and a half times. I usually do it longer, but that's a rule of thumb. So I'm gonna start in the inside of the paper because I actually want it knotted on the inside. So I'm going to start on the inside and then knot it on the inside. So. We're going to go through there this may be boring to you for, that have done this before but anyway for those who don't hopefully it will make sense center up to the top back into the center oh I'm sorry down to the bottom <laughs> not paying attention I'll take it through the signature first center and there
there you have it. Very easy. So you can see I've got plenty of string there to tie it off. So you just make sure it's good and tight. It looks good on the outside. So make sure it's good and tight. You want, when you bring these two back up, so it's coming back in the center where you're gonna tie your knot, you want a string on either side of this long one, right? And then you just tie a double knot. <clears throat> and there you go. I'm gonna leave these long for now in case I decide to do something fancy inside there. I haven't decided yet. So there we go. So we're gonna take that off. And there's one signature in there and it fit pretty good okay so now we're gonna do this other signature All kinds of pressure because I know I'm on camera now. <laughs> Let's try that again. Probably, as you noticed, um, you don't knot the string beforehand. You just make sure that your tail's long enough that you don't pull it through because then it's a pain you got to start all over. So, again, we're going to start in the center, go through the center hole. Actually, I'm going to go through just the signature first and through the center hole and up in the top. Tore that a little bit. It'll be okay. And I'm just pulling it off. There's still a tail here to tie. And then all the way to the bottom. I'm not being super careful either because I don't want to bore you spending too too much time. So anyway, through the bottom hole. And then through the bottom hole of the cover, the folio. And then back into the center hole of the folio and the signature. So again, just pull this tight, make sure it's tight on the outside, and then you do your double knot like that on either side of this string, and there you go. So again, I'm not going to cut short yet because I just haven't decided yet what I'm going to do there. And then I can take the clips off. And there we go. So I have two signatures in there. So I kind of just turned the folio into, it's still a folio, but it's got kind of a book in the center. So it still closes up just like that. Um, I put these ties, these, I kind of save everything. Well, not everything, but anything I think I can use in a creative way, I hang on to. So this, this was actually, um, came out of a, a hoodie <laughs> kind of a sweatshirt hoodie so it already had this bead on it and it's kind of like a little cord and when I 
threw away my sweatshirt, <laughs> I kept this, and so I'm reusing it. So I do that with lots of clothes. If they're headed to the garbage, I'll take off the pockets or buttons or whatever I think I can use because I love to repurpose. So there's my folio. So you can see the outside has got the strings on it like that, which I think is kind of a cool um, little feature. If you wanted to, you could um, also hang charms on there or slip through ribbons or make anything fancy there. And I'm still gonna add more things here, but this little pocket, um, I just created this side pocket here and I fussy cut this image because I just love that image. So I fussy cut um, the main paper sheet. I can't remember what it's called now, but the main one from Farmhouse Collection. Cut that out and covered that. So this is a little pocket here. You can slip all kinds of things in. And I'm going to add some more things here, some more embellishments, some embellishments in here as well. But for now, I'll just show you this. So now we've got these little books, booklets here inside that we can use for anything. So I, and this is the reason, because I just adore this paper, and I just really wanted to see kind of the whole face of it and not lose it. So that's what that is. And then I've just put a blank. This is just um, basically some writing paper I had. Um, of course, you can also coffee stain these too beforehand, which is always fun. Um, I just didn't take the time to do that. And I also wanted sort of the smooth surface for writing on. Um, this is sort of out of an old book. It's called um, Inventory of Home Furnishings. So you could actually use this if you wanted to. Um, or you can just, you know, put things over top of it or clip things on it. And then more of this beautiful paper. This paper I actually folded over so it creates a little tuck spot right here inside there. And then some more paper, just writing paper. I put this doily in here, which I did coffee stain a while ago, and I just thought it went perfect um, with this collection. So I just threw that little doily in there for fun. Um, more of the beautiful paper. This is just a sheet of, um, kind of like vellum, vellum, it's actually tracing paper, but I just thought that was really pretty, so I added that. And more writing paper. So, that's my little booklet. So you can do everything from writing on here. If you wanted to write on here, um, just cut some more writing paper like this, um, and you can just glue it over top of this if you like and then write on that too. Or put photographs in here or clip documents, whatever you want to do. But um, lots of options are endless. This page was a little short because I folded, where is it now? Because I folded this side over, I wanted a pocket. It made this side a little bit shorter, which was totally fine for me because I love that dimension, and different textures. And so that is the one. And then this one, again, I loved this rooster paper. And so I wanted that showing as well. And it matches the rooster I have over here too. <laughs> so I have that one. And then again, I just did the same thing. So I've got writing paper, um, some more of that inventory home furniture of your home furniture. Um, this is another sheet that I love. Some more blank paper pattern paper, a doily, tracing paper, and blank paper. So there's lots in there um, to use. And so I hope you like that. It's just a little bit of a different idea. The folio idea from the Club G45 was amazing and I loved it and it was great and um, easy to do. And so I just decided, and I love journaling and doing the signatures. Is kind of my thing so I decided to make that work so there you have it it still folds up like that there you go so I will um, finish up what I'm doing on here I'm going to add more embellishments and some more paper and odds and ends and then I will do another little video with a bit of a walkthrough and show you how it's finished off but I hope you enjoyed that and I hope um, you duplicate it. Remember too that 
when you get these wonderful instructions from the Club G45, remember you can use this over and over to just with different paper. So any new line that comes out, you can do the same thing, do the exact same folio, just using another paper line. And it's like a brand new project. So I hope that gives you some additional ideas and I hope you enjoyed it and can duplicate it. So thanks so much for watching and have a very creative day. Bye-bye.